Hello and welcome back to Ticker Symbol Live, where we take a look at ARK Invest's five-year vision of the future and back that up to what they're investing in today. So, by popular demand, I'm doing a video on Nano Dimension stock. So the first thing I will let you know is that you, <coughs> excuse me, is that you can comment below with uh, your stock overview and analysis requests. These live streams are made for you, and I'm definitely happy to take a break from analyzing them in the order that I want to do one that everyone thinks uh, will add a lot of value up front. For example, Nano Dimension has been requested time and time again, so we're doing it today. Uh, let's dive right into the ARC reactor and we'll take a quick look at what else ARC Invest has been buying and then we'll turn to Nano Dimensions investor presentation. So here's the ARC reactor. I have everything sorted in terms of ARC rank. So of course, Tesla is in the top position. Teladoc number two, square number three on and on the list. Uh, on the right side, we can see the weighting of their combined funds. Tesla weighing in at an incredible $3.8 billion. Teladoc over $2.5 billion down and down the list. And you can see it was a moderately green day. They're just buying positions, uh, selling out of intercontinental exchange just a little bit, only a 2% drop in that position. Going down and down the list, Trimble, the number one holding in ARCX, ARC Invest's newest fund themed around space exploration. So, of course, a big buy there as that fund continues to grow. You know, slightly red, slightly green, nothing really to speak of. Trade Desk uh, is their 78th biggest position. They increased their position by 14%. Uh, from the trading day before last. And as we get to the 97th position, we settle in on Nano Dimension. Nano Dimension is just over a $100 million position for ARK Invest, and it sits inside ARK Q, ARK Invest's fund themed around uh, the autonomous revolution, as well as ARK W, ARK Invest's fund themed around uh, the next generation of internet applications. So, what the heck is Nano Dimensions and why is everyone gaga over it? So let's go to the browser. Share my screen here. Go to my browser tabs. Where is it? Oh, it's probably here. I was reading about the short seller report on Nano Dimension. So far, nothing interesting. So we can boop, close out of that. Nano Dimension stock is down about 50% from recent all-time highs. In fact, 50% exactly. So if you invest in Nano Dimensions now and it touches a new all-time high, you will have literally doubled your money. That's interesting enough to me to talk about it today. Uh, so what I'd like to do is see if I can get this to work with sound this time. And if not, let me know right away and I will start narrating this video because I've watched it about a dozen times now. So... Let me stop sharing again, share my screen, share a Chrome tab this time, capabilities of 3D printing with sound, let's go. So let me know if you can hear this video, please. Speaking of printed electronics and, and 3D printing, so, so on the one hand, the item itself is, is, is printed, so you have a shape, a structure, um, and then within that, you've got the, the electronic traces, the conductive traces, rather, positioned so that, obviously, you can see here, this is uh, the beginnings of a thermometer, and one of the questions is, you know, how much of a product can I print? Well, so you can print that, that uh, structural part, and you can start adding in that functionality as well, so you'll see these traces all the way through to the tip, and, uh, you know, the item being ready here for for an LCD display to be added into that into that item. So this is really merging those two worlds of, of 3D and, and non-3D. This happens to be a, a in sort of a planar uh, circuit within an object, but you can, of course, also print the circuitry as a spiral, uh, which we'll look at in a moment. So one of the shapes that's really exciting in the world of electronics is, is coils and, and, and spirals, and that you know, that's the world of motors. It's uh, beginning to look at things like capacitance or, or in this case, um, an, an electromagnet. And what we're looking at here is you know, 12 layers of, of coil that are built up. These layers are printed. They're very, very thin because the printer is able to deposit uh, very thin layers of material. And essentially what you get here is an entirely new way of making 
a you know electrically functional part in this case uh, a coil which actually I can uh, plug in one thing that I want to show you is that you know it's not working as as a as a magnet now when it's when it isn't plugged in but if we then connect that to a power source as follows we we'll give it a couple of seconds to, to warm up. That little magnet there is then something that you can pick up with the electromagnet, um, and you know it's fully fully functional as you'd expect it to be. Now, obviously, some people are very suspicious and think there's probably a, another magnet hidden inside there. So I will demonstrate what happens when you disconnect it, and you'll see that you know this is being driven by the by the electrical uh, magnet rather than some other sneaky uh, circus trickery. So what you see here is is something you could essentially uniquely do with, with 3D printing. So we've printed in a, a geometric pattern here in order to enable the, this rigid polymer to have mechanical properties that you wouldn't normally be able to get out of a, out of a rigid plastic. So it's maintaining that thickness of, of part all the way through, uh, a little bit as you might do with, say, CNCing into, into wood or metals to allow them to flex. So this is one way of, of bridging the gap between you know, rigidity and, and flexibility in a part. So following on that theme of, of flexibility, so one way, as we just saw, is printing in geometries into the polymer. And this part actually uses a, a slightly different technique where you, can, you might be able to make out the taper here in that polymer. So there's a mechanical uh, strain relief, essentially. You go down from a thicker, rigid part of the board which over here you can see is also the bit where you'd be able to say solder parts or even in this case into those cavities you could um, embed the parts as well and because of that strain relief going through as the part gets thinner uh, it goes from being rigid to being flexible and you can tune the amount of uh, bend or flex you want to get in this part of the component by adjusting its its thickness in your in and your notice there's design. still electrical so contact traces everywhere rigid. along this part and so it's it's a, it's being uh, able to conduct this, electricity example, while it does in, this in, right in bend to fit type applications where you might want things to fit into a smaller constrained space and you can adjust you know the, the fit not just in terms of size but mechanical properties as well Excellent. So hopefully that was a taste of. <laughs> so hopefully that was a taste of what Nano Dimensions does. And then I'll show you one more quick video. This time I will narrate it because it looks like when there's two audio and video sources in real time, it's a little choppy. You know, we're flying by the seat of our pants here. Uh, so I'll narrate the next video, but hopefully that gives you a taste of what actually Nano Dimensions does, right? It combines 3D printed circuit boards with 3D printing technology, right? Uh, excuse me, printed circuit boards with 3D printing technology to make use of the mechanical advantages offered by 3D printing and uh, embedding electronics into that 3D printed space, right? So being able to flex, being able to reduce weight, being able to make custom shapes, being able to integrate circuits into that, and of course, being able to just make raw parts like thermometers with spaces for those contact traces in 3D printing means they can plug and play right into existing manufacturing processes, but bring a lot of optimized design to that space by virtue of doing it in a 3D printing way, right? Yeah, right. So, so good comments here. Fanciest cable I've ever seen. And this is exactly why uh, Nano Dimensions is for prototypes. Where do you put fancy cables? Well, in things like rockets, Mars rovers, airborne drones, military applications, the exact total addressable market that Nano Dimensions is addressing, right? That's exactly where you put these types of fancy cables and sort of prototypical widgets, right? So here's another video that I want to show you that kind of shows you how Nano Dimensions has taken that to the extreme. And then we'll dive into the investor deck now that we have a visual idea of what Nano Dimension actually does as a company. Right, so let me share my screen again here. This time I will share it. Just the browser tab. Boom, so this is what we were just watching. So in this video, what they do is now let's look at how the product does this, right? Taking it from Nano Dimensions prototype to what Nano Dimensions actually does to help others prototype, if that makes sense. So the video, you should not hear sound on this. I'm going to narrate it. The dragonfly 
is uh, the machine that they use. It's the Nano Dimension machine. And what they do is they can print circuit boards as well as the spaces for the contacts and the electrical components uh, inside the circuit board. So that allows companies to rapidly prototype. So they offer software and hardware solutions uh, for the companies looking to build these 3D printed uh, prototypes. And what that really allows companies to do is accelerate their prototyping efforts. So instead of having to send a prototype design overseas and have it be built by a PCB company somewhere in China or somewhere uh, where the actual manufacturing happens, you can do this in-house with one machine. You, you no longer need a whole printed circuit board lab, which as we'll see, uh, is a multi-step, multi-machine process. Now you can create a prototype, try it out, refine it, create another prototype, and you're skipping all the lead times associated with doing that, which is really important for defense applications, science applications, things where that prototype sits on the critical path. So, you know, non-planar parts, so making, you know, designs with diagonals. Let's uh, just go back to that for a second and pause here non-planar parts. What this means is exactly what we saw before, variable thickness, variable densities, right? And then variable shapes such that you can do things like flex the shape or add rigid rigidity to the shape or add cavities to the shape to reduce weight for a given uh, profile, mechanical profile, right? So again, think about rockets, think about airborne drones, think about all these military applications where reducing weight but keeping the other mechanical properties is really important because now you're saving on things like fuel. So hopefully that gives you a good sense of what this company does and how it does it, right? 3D printing polymers. You can see the nano dimension shape here. The other thing I want to call out is all these really fine, intricate, um, you know, literal text and their logo, which is very intricate. And this is really important to call out because they have a very, very accurate, very fine 3D printing technique here. They're able to print on very, very small scales, which is what you need for these type of, you know, massively complex 3D printed circuit boards, right? Something like this with all these contact traces, something like this with all these contact traces requires very thin, very fine lines that can conduct electricity, right? Excellent. Let's flip to their investor presentation. Seeing a lot of uh, good questions in the comments. Do I think uh, NNDM is a direct competitor to Velo 3D? Nope. Velo 3D does metal 3D printing. So think about big, big metal parts that go into rockets. Uh, and Nano Dimensions does uh, 3D printing for electronics. So they operate in the same market, 3D printing, but widely different applications within that market. That's kind of like saying Ford and Tesla compete. <laughs> so great question. So this is Nano Dimensions uh, investor presentation. Let's make sure it fills the whole screen here. Excellent. And we're now that we understand what this company does, we can blow through it and talk about the interesting thing of things about is as a publicly traded company, right? So they own they own IP that built that they use to build 3D printing 3D printers for electrical components, right? Electrical components and printed circuit boards. And so here's some of the things they're able to print. We saw those in the video. So everything from real electromagnets to uh, you know thermometers to plastic parts that hold conductors, all these things that allow for rapid prototyping. That's what we're talking about here. So we watch this video where they can uh, print in both highly conductive materials as well as dielectrics uh, so that they can uh, what you get when you mix those two is printed circuit boards with clear paths that electricity follows to make contacts be between the components you care about. And importantly, this is just one manufacturing step, just one manufacturing step, which means you no longer need etching, pressing, and electroplating. So if we go down a couple slides, you can see some of the components that they can build. So circuits with capacitors, uh, coils and inductors. RF antennas, which is really important for a lot of uh, applications from, you know, cell phones to radars, etc. 
Uh, and then here's a really cool, I think, just total integrated circuit that they built. So you can see LEDs, you can see microchips, you can see all sorts of things uh, in a complex novel shape that plugs in and works. But the point here is this is not a shape that you could easily traditionally manufacture. But with 3D printing, this is a breeze, right? And so this, this left hand image here, let me zoom in a bit. This is what a traditional printed circuit board lab looks like. There's chemical processes, there's mechanical processes, there's electrical processes, and a printed circuit board would move around this room as it gets built and many different experts need to touch it, right? So what Nano Dimensions has done is replace that whole process with a single machine that does all that. And what that lets you do is rapidly prototype on a printed circuit board so that you can keep moving along with the process instead of waiting for all these things to happen. Uh, so we talked a little bit about uh, what kind of things they build and what I'd really like to get to, there's a great uh, slide here where they say, hey, this is uh, the value that's being added here, right? Here's, here's that slide. So 185, Ooh, zoom in even more. Sorry about that, guys. So traditional PCBs get built overseas. What happens is they get designed here or designed wherever the, you know, the market leader is. They get shipped to Vietnam, Taiwan, South Korea, Japan, and China, built and then brought back, right? So prototypes are often created by sending digital designs and waiting 7 to 21 days uh, to receive a PCB back, right? Uh, and this puts a slow, costly... Uh, this is a slow and costly process that puts intellectual property at risk, right? Because people can steal your design as they're building it for you. So what happens is that design, that prototyping and design phase moves from weeks to days because you're able to do that building of the prototype in-house, right? So that's the key here. And because prototyping is such a big part Sorry, my audio cut, cut out there for a sec. Because prototyping is such an important part of the process and happens early on, what this means is you can save more and more time uh, as you go through different iterations, which means you can iterate more, which means you can come out with a better design overall. Do, do, do. Switch back here. Don't know what's going on with my camera today. Sorry about that. So that's the point here is you're able to iterate more upfront on your design. And when you can do that, you can create a better design because you get more tries in the same amount of time, right? So that's what's going on here, weeks down to days. And as a result, the return on your investment is big because production moves from months to weeks. Because now when you decide on a prototype and on a, des and on a design, now you're in a position to build that yourself, especially if the component is something that's low scale, right? Low scale and complex parts is where 3D printing really shines. So hopefully that gives you an understanding of what type of market uh, Nano Dimensions is addressing. So what it does and who it's for, right? 3D printed electronics. There's a lot of really interesting case studies in this presentation that I have to blow through or else this will be a, you know, four hour live stream. So their plan for 2021 is uh, expanding into nano OS as a revenue generator, right? So expanding into very, very complex processing components. They're investing heavily to preempt the seeds of competition. So going back to that question before, they're investing aggressively because they know that their competitors are going to catch up with them or trying to catch up with them and minimal investments in sales and marketing. This is something we always look for in growing companies. If you have to spend a lot of money to make a lot of money, you don't have a really good business model unless your business model is marketing right? So when I, whenever I see a technology company that calls out, we do not spend a lot on the actual growing. We spend it on the technology because that's what's going to make us grow. I'm very happy. And of course, we saw that in yesterday's presentation as well. So they have deployed approximately 60 systems globally. Remember, this is a early in the life cycle of the company. They're definitely in high growth mode. They have new nano dimension customers, three multi-billion U.S. defense manufacturers, two European defense companies, one multi-billion U.S. company, 
that's a conglomerate, and multiple uh, leading research institutions around the world. So additive manufacturing for 3D electronics, the other thing that you can do is you can start printing in 3D. So classic PCB design on the left here, you can see that it's a flat surface where all of the contacts and traces get built into the PCB, and then some electronics sits on top of it. But because we're 3D printing things now, now that circuit can take whatever shape you want, which means you can optimize for things like strength or optimize for things like weight. Uh, so, you know, all the different things they're working on, here's their, here's a call out to their total addressable market, research, aerospace, defense, medical, automotive, and industrial, right? And again, the focus here is on complex, low volume parts, you know, the thing that there's only one of, two of, five of in a uh, specific machine, not the things like the nuts and bolts of which there are millions in a given machine. So the rest of these are case studies. So we can stop there, right? And now I can answer any questions you want as you look at my faceless live stream because my camera has failed me once again. Let's take a look at some of their financials. I believe we have to scroll all the way down past all these case studies, different additive manufacturing techniques, talking about uh, all the different structures that they can do based on 3D printing the PCB production by type. So how it breaks down into single sided two to six layers, you know, different structures of the actual PCBs and what they can do about it. Da, da, da. Here's the traditional PCB process versus the layering. So laminating, drilling the board, plating holes, photolithography, that's that like chemical process, tin and lead plating, etching, you know, something with hot air and then soldering and then applying the solder, right? So all of these steps used to be individual machines and now they are uh, parts of the process that takes place in nano dimensions single machine. So hopefully you can get a sense here for how many steps they're saving in that process. Do you see this getting included in ArcX? It's not easy to get the parts replacement in space exploration. Having an electronics 3D printer is definitely needed. Yeah, I agree with this a ton. I'm really not sure why an NDM is not currently in ArcX. I think it's definitely a no-brainer. Uh, and I my guess is it's going to be in ArcX eventually as that starts making more sense for the space. So maybe it has more to do with Nano Dimension as a company specifically, and less to do with the idea of 3D printing electric circuit boards. Maybe there's something specific about NNDM, why that company wasn't included in ArcX, right? So uh, let me know what other questions you have about this. I'm happy to you know talk about traditional PCBs, mechanics. I wanna know your thoughts. Right. So one question I have for you is, do you think 3D printing uh, is the future or do you think it's just a manufacturing fad? Right. Uh, are there any specific industries or types or of parts or processes that you think are going to be just fads and get phased out? For example, we talked about 3D printing houses in earlier videos. Or do you think that 3D printing is a new paradigm that's going to take over slowly but surely overall? Um, this is something you can go look up. So uh, I can go look this up right now, but NNDM is in print. Let's, let's go take a look. So if I go to uh, arcinvest.com slash PRNT, uh, is that going to work? Nope. If I go to arcfunds.com slash PRNT, which is the correct website, let's take a look and see if we can find out how much NNDM is in uh, PRNT. So I'm going to search for NNDM. NNDM is not in PRNT. How do you like that? It is not in this fund at all. That's very interesting. And my guess is because this is more about traditional 3D printing. And what really is going on with NNDM is it is more for uh, electronics manufacturing. Wow, great call out. I did not expect to see zero NNDM uh, in um, 
print ARK Invest's index fund themed around 3D printing. So, right, lots of good, interesting comments. That's really huge. Revolutionary way to make a multi-layer board. Absolutely. And multi-layer architectures are the future of PCBs, in my opinion. So when we talk about multi-layer boards like this one, I think that one of the best ways to make this is through 3D printing. I don't think you can do this very quickly, very cheaply, very easily with traditional printed circuit board manufacturing. How can the prototype be mass produced with 3D printing? Yep, this is a great question. Uh, I think we would need to move towards high volume, low cost, quick 3D printers where they just take designs and can chug through them as opposed to the ones focused more on engineering and iterative iterative design iterative design, excuse me. And I think what will happen there is just like we're seeing with blockchain, blockchain started out being very slow, clunky, but really good at being secure, right? Like the Bitcoin blockchain to now having all different architectures that allow you to trade between things like security and speed. I think we'll see some of that in 3D printing as well. Where, well, where we are trading between resolution and fidelity and things like quickness, speed, you know, um, resolution of the printer and so on. So you can imagine if you don't need such elegant and precise designs, you can say, okay, this 3D printer can't do those things, but what you get instead is the board 10 times faster or 100 times faster or something like that. I think that type of paradigm shift is really needed in 3D printing, and that's what's stopping it from being able to aggressively attack low complexity, high volume parts? Uh, I don't know. So this is a good question. Any idea on when ARK Invest will add ARKX to their daily trades and emails? Probably when the volume dies down a little bit, it's growing by hundreds or thousands of percents a day still. Uh, and I actually don't follow the emails. I download their holdings every day because that's the quickest way to get access to all of their data across all of their ETFs. So it looks like my camera has failed me today. This is one of the pitfalls of doing things in live streams. So I'd love to hear your comments below uh, on other stock overview analysis and requests. You know, I make these live streams for you. Uh, I enjoy doing them even when my camera fails. I'll uh, zoom in on my um, still picture here so you can see what's going on. But you know, I love running through these stock analyses. It makes me a better investor. It makes me more informed on the individual pieces of our future, the companies driving that future, the new ideas coming together and converging. So 3D printing and printed circuit board design in this case. Uh, and I think that convergence is super cool. And I think this is a great time to be investing in it. So let me know what stock overviews and analyses you want me to do on this channel, and I'll work them into the list. Tomorrow, we will go back to looking at what ARK Invest is buying and selling and pick their biggest buy from today. So I hope everyone has a good market open. This is Ticker Symbol Live. My name is Alex, even though I'm frozen in time here. And I'm reminding you that the best investment you can make is in you. Thanks for watching.